Come back to the exchange. Just under 16,000 fans attended last night's NFL season opener after the Chiefs instituted a 22 percent capacity cap and only one other NFL stadium will be partially filled this weekend for games. But there won't be any fans in attendance when the Los Angeles Rams host their first game in their $5 billion SoFi Stadium. So what impact will the pandemic have on teams and cities looking to pay off this stadium debt? For more, I'm joined by Randy Girardi. He's head of municipal strategy for Wells Fargo. He worked on financing for Yankee Stadium and City Field, among others. It's good to have you back, Randy. Welcome. Thanks, Kelly. Great to be back again. So who's left holding the bag if there's not enough ticket revenue coming in? Well, it really depends on, on the structure of the uh, financing. So if it's a private financing where the revenues of the stadium are there for bondholders' benefit, then clearly if you don't have any fans in the stadium, there's clearly a revenue impact. For the public side, where you had states and, uh, and local localities who have financed these stadiums, uh, the revenues will continue to flow. Uh, it really depends on a political uh, sort of understanding with all the pressures at the local level to be able to pay for a stadium that's empty uh, is a pretty difficult pill to swallow for politicians. Right. So while the revenues uh, will flow under the public side, the politics get a little messy. On the, on the private side where revenues are there, you, you have to uh, look at the uh, structure of the transaction to really get your uh, comfort level on what the risks are. Yeah, so let's start with the bondholders. You know, this is an investing show after all. So if you're in, who for the most part is exposed in terms of stadium finance debt and who stands to lose the most uh, if these deals have to be restructured? Sure, so I mean, we, we actually think that, you know, bondholders are t typically institutional investors, though you will have some retail investment dollars. After all, a lot of this is tax exempt and in the municipal market, which is a highly retail market. But really, the team owners are, are, are really, uh, you know, exposed in a certain extent because if just like a, a house is one of the biggest assets for a, a person's balance sheet, these stadiums are pretty important to the valuations of the teams. If you look at uh, most recently, uh, Forbes released the uh, valuations for NFL teams, and most of the top five in terms of valuations have had recently reconstructed or new stadiums. So these revenues are pretty important to the valuations of the teams. And the owners, obviously, are pretty uh, pretty focused on, on that revenue stream. So uh, bondholders are definitely uh, on the hook, uh, but uh, there are a lot of uh, belts and suspenders to these transactions. We have seen strikes, for example, which uh, typically these transactions do have an ability to maintain cash flow uh, for a strike up to a year. So there are some supports here. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, this pandemic, we're not sure how long it goes and we're not sure uh, yeah. how the impact's going to play out. So I can see, you know, the best case scenario is this is akin to a strike. Next year, all the stadiums are full, nothing changes. But what happens if people lose interest, uh, don't show up the way they used to? Team owners, are, you know, aren't getting the value that they thought they would be getting. What happens then? Sure. So a lot of these stadiums were uh, constructed with this concept of contractually obligated income. So you have... Uh, you know, naming rights, for example, that are long-term contracts. You've got suites and luxury suites as well, luxury seating product generally overall. So that revenue is going to continue to flow. Uh, the issue is, you know, the stadiums in terms of concessions, uh, some of the impacts with respect to, you know, workers that rely on stadiums uh, for their employment. That's certainly something uh, something to be, uh, you know, monitored uh, but, you know, generally, uh, you know, these deals do have some ability to withstand it. Uh, you know, going forward, we had already seen that the technology, you know, increases at home have, you know, moved people to the couch from yeah. in the state already. So, you know, it's going to be uh, something that bears watching uh, for sure. Yeah, especially if it turns out we've been already at peak valuations for a lot of these teams, uh, which would surprise people. Randy, thanks as always. Appreciate it very much. Absolutely. Thank Randy you. Randy Girardi's of Wells Fargo talking about stadium financing. Coming up, J.P. Morgan wants to make it easy for investors to get in on some of the biggest and buzziest companies before they go public. We've got the details in a CNBC exclusive. And remember, you can always watch or listen to us live on the go on the CNBC app. We're back in a couple. Muni Money is sponsored by BAM. Ask your investment advisor about BAM insured Muni bonds. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. 
BAMS Insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption. So while America rebuilds, BAM has you covered. BAM. Build America Mutual. Talk to your investment advisor or visit buildamerica.com.